<laughs> and this day is a lot of tough decisions have to be made yeah. and sometimes you make it on the run you make it when you're sitting in a room or under a tree mm -hmm. which very often in our culture mm -hmm. Well, good morning, and here we are with Jackson Losoy, what, how, Losea. No, Losea. Losea. Mm -hmm. Losea. Okay, I wanted to make sure I, I said that correctly. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the people that are watching us today mm -hmm. might know you from Big Cat Tales. Yeah. And how, tell us how did that start? How did how did they find you, and how did you get involved in that into the television show? Big Cat Tales was the result of the previous Big Cat Diary, which mm -hmm. was a BBC program. And because I was on BBC and uh, previously, and uh, you know, talk on television, I've been a presenter for several documentaries. Yeah. So they they followed that record, uh -huh. and they started Big Cat Tales season one and uh, Big Cat Tales season two. Yes, yes. And so that's uh, a fabulous program. It's a nice follow up on on the what life, as you know, yes. the what life of the celebrities. Right. Right. Well, and it was so nice watching you on that and then getting to meet you in person. And obviously you have a lot of expertise, not just with cats, but with everything. And uh, it's been fascinating spending this time with you and listening to everything that you know about the animals. We were talking about cobras yesterday and various things like that. What got you interested in all of these things? How did you begin? Mm. Well, um, you, if you live here, as you can see, yeah. the, the big classroom obviously if you have a, a curious mind and a curious um, personality you would like to know what is all this about yes yeah. this is a, a very big picture and I'm inside the big picture right and uh, living here being born here raised up in the Masai Mara okay um, I've got to understand I've got to learn how did that tree works with the birds who, yeah. who parasites the tree which birds feed on those fruits, which insects feed on the flowers, mm -hmm. and the flowers also lead to other predators. And the whole picture is, is just obvious. You have to learn, you have to want to know if you, if you have the right uh, mindset. Yeah. My mindset was uh, put up together by somebody else. First of all, it started from my father, who was uh, uh, he was working for the wildlife department in the wildlife oh, service. Okay, nice. And then I met uh, my mentor, a fellow called Ron Beeson. Okay. And he will never go away. Yeah. He's part of my life. Yes, yes. And he himself being a conservationist, and he started many conservancies, and we started um, tourism together. He tried to be a guide. Okay. And as a guide, you've got to learn. Yes. You've got to know your subject. Yes. And yes. not one the subject is huge. Uh, geology, you got botanical uh, to learn about all the flowers, all the trees, and then you know, all the rocks, all the soil, and, and then you got to learn about the, the, the bigger things that everybody comes here for the wildlife. Yes, and um, obviously, if you have the knowledge about the wildlife, you know, the migration, which is the biggest, yes, um, uh, biomass of wildlife that comes to the Masai mm -hmm. Mara system, mm -hmm. then you, it leads to everything else. Yes. And it's a constantly, I mean, you're constantly learning. I'm sure you're still learning uh, because you, you have to, you know, take a lifetime to get all of this knowledge, uh, you know, together. And But you also have to do some um, schooling or guide. Um, you know, you have to pass some tests and levels and things to become a guide, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So um, in, in guiding, you either learn from a professional, as in, in my time, you learn from somebody, which mm -hmm. is the best way to learn. Yes. And then you you continue with your books. You know, I, I don't know, I've got how many books to go through in yeah. my life. And how many doctors that has gone under to learn about the geology, to learn about right. the, the botanical, to learn about the entomology. You know, mm -hmm. I've got so many people who are doctors who are on that field that we go underneath them and they teach us and we go to learn a lot yes yeah yeah, yeah, so yeah, the, yeah the real professional world and then you translate that as a teacher to the people who come to us right you know people who are coming from you know city life uh, some come from the environmental lifestyle and they they all want to know 
about this. So as a guide, you have to pass that. Then you go and produce, proceed into the goal. That's the latest. Yes. For the younger generation now. They got to do all of that right and then we as the people who are being a little bit ahead of them then we teach them even more you know this is this is what all these trees all translated about then you we teach about astronomy because i learned so much about astronomy as i was growing up oh wow so the different constellations uh -huh. where they are and how to use that for time how do you use that for direction it's it's fabulous yeah. so the field is so big it's so huge it's yeah not, not only one yeah. it's huge and uh, and so that's that's my background right as well so and it's obviously your passion big. because you <laughs> everything about it you'd like that you've just named and mm -hmm. how it all works mm -hmm. together yeah. And that all leads also to conservation, mm -hmm. which is, is very important. And the Masai Mara has been a huge success story in conservation. Um, you, can you tell just a little bit about the history of, because uh, I know at one point the, uh, you know, the wildlife was, mm -hmm. it, levels were down mm -hmm. and so forth. So how did it come back and, and get to where it is now? So the, the Masai Mara is, the, I will divide it into three. I will divide into the national reserve, which is protected by the government of mm -hmm. Kenya. Uh, so Maasai Mara National Reserve, that's one. I, w I always call this, this is the nuclear, okay. of, which is binding every single conservation concept. Because if that is not there, nothing will work. Right. And so I call that as the core. The most important part is the core of our national reserve, yes. Maasai Mara. Then we divide into conservancies. So the conservancies are the buffer, which is next level community are there, the traditional lifestyle of how we live in this land for years, traditionally yeah. for thousands of years, and why the wildlife have existed with human during all this period. Yes. National reserve, nobody can live in it. Legally, nobody can even graze into it. Okay. You leave that purely for what? And you have the conservancy. We live in there, we graze our cows, we walk on daily basis. Yes. That's how we live for thousands of years. Yes. In the Mara. Then you have now the final bit, the, where the community are now doing their normal life without interfering, still with one life. Yes. There will be hyenas, you know, attacking their cows and, and lions and so on, but they're battling. Because they are coming from a protected conservancy and a protected national reserve. Right. And there are no fences anywhere between here and probably Nairobi. Yes. The water is not free. So the wildlife can just move <laughs> as they yeah. as they are supposed to. And, yeah. and, and that's what helps with the migration yeah. as well. Because mm -hmm. between here and Tanzania, also the fences that were up at one point have all been taken yeah. down. And the yeah. animals can now do what they naturally are supposed Did. to do. Yeah, yeah. what they are not really hard, supposed to do for thousands of years. Right. Now, the conservation concept, it is still evolving. Mm -hmm. we, we just started. And probably we are the number one model in Africa. Wow. There isn't anywhere that has got this model in Eastern Africa. Where our neighbors in Tanzania, yes. they don't have it. Yeah. Our neighbors in Uganda, they don't have it. Yes. The South African models, they, none of them have it. Right. And uh, very often when we have our friends from South, Southern Africa, mm -hmm. they come here and see how we live with buffalo and lions yes. and hippos and elephants. Yes. We thought for conservation to work, you have to move people out completely, right, and have pure wildlife. Yes, but the land is so small. We need to have lived the way we have lived thousands of years, right? If it is applicable, so we applied in the Mara. So we have Lenny Conservancy, Mara Nose. We have Olari Motorogi Conservancy. We have. Uh, an Umsi Conservancy, we have Nashulai Conservancy, we have, we have like about 10 different conservancies yeah. which, which are bordering the National Reserve. Right. All work. Yes. And it really worked well. Yeah. Some of the reasons why it works is because conservancy is about income. Yes. Income direct to the, to the local people. And I will have a bank account and the person will have an interest to do tourism. In, the, in this contract mm -hmm. area, that money will go straight into, into co con uh, protecting that area yes. and protecting our families. Mm -hmm. you know, think of our children, think of our cows, think of our uh, 
um, our extended families. If we didn't have that protection, well, we will do something else on that land. Right? It could be ranching, like in Texas. It could be ranching in Mexico. It could yes. be ranching in Australia. Yeah. But then, in ranching in, in a professional scale, get a wildlife out. Yes. And do pure ranching. Right. But we, in the Maasai culture, we decided, right, let's mix up. I've heard the buffalo will be there. Coexist. And yeah. cows there. Yeah. And there will be gazelle there and sheep there. Yeah. And in our culture, we say sheep is ours, gazelle is God goats. Yes. Okay. Yes. Buffaloes is God cows. Right. And cows is our cows. Yes. But we believe in the same God. We believe in the same belief yes. that we can coexist. Yes. So we, that. We, we have worked in that way. And it really has been. Yeah. Fabulous. It's been a great success. Mm -hmm. Great success. And then, so today, uh, speaking of tourism, we are sitting here at your uh, camp lodge, which you own with a partner, Dominic, who is not with us today. Tangulia, excuse me, I keep saying that wrong, yeah. uh, Mara. And this is a very special, special camp. And one of the reasons is because you and your partner are both Maasai, mm -hmm. and it is the only privately owned uh, Maasai mm -hmm. uh, business, correct? Yeah. Uh, or camp. Yeah. 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 So tell, how did that become? How, what, how did you guys get this going? Well, I have to give credit to my business partner, Dominic, and, uh, because he found this beautiful land that we're sitting on, and uh, he ventured into tourism on his own. While I was in tourism, in a partnership away from this, so I, I learned a little bit. Yeah. As I previously mentioned, Ron Bitten, yes, my mentor, mm -hmm. I was in partnership with him, and uh, well, so when that business was sold, I was alone um, walking about like in Yeramasa and I stumbled upon Dominic, which we were uh, in school together. We oh, grew okay. up as kids, okay. so, so we knew each other. Yes. Well. Um, so I said, how did you start a business? So he said, I ventured it, but he, he had on a very low scale, mm -hmm. what it targeted with locals, because how do you get the market? How do you get to you? Yes. That would have been the biggest challenge mm -hmm. that Dominic uh, uh, met. But I said, I can resolve that because I've already traveled through my previous business. Yes. I have contacts, so I've already known many people and travel agencies and guests who have already know my reputation. Mm -hmm. So I could tell them to come and check if they work. And uh, we joined Hand about five years ago. Yes. It, it was the most brave move, scary move. Sure. Because uh, we are cattle past release people. Right. To going into business. Yes. And uh, and business is not very easy. It's tricky. It's right. a lot of corners. You go through these and yes. you turn around. <laughs> Twists and turns uh, twist everywhere. And turn. <laughs> uh, you have to have a little bit of craziness because <laughs> In <laughs> faith. Lots of faith. <laughs> in business is a lot of tough decisions have to be made yeah. and sometimes you make it on the run. You make it when you're sitting in a room or under a tree mm -hmm. which very often in our culture we sit under a tree and make good decisions of Right, that's good. So we did it, and uh, with the support of Bush and Beyond, um, it has become successful, yeah. and it's been unbelievable. Well, so, it's a it's a beautiful setting, yeah. and all of the people that work here with you yeah. are fabulous, yeah. and uh, obviously love the business and respect you, and yeah. are learning from you. You're training the next generation, yeah. which is so important too, mm -hmm. and. And that takes a lot of time and uh, commitment. Yeah. Um, so here uh, you have eight and everything. It's a yeah. tented camp. Yeah. And wow. uh, what that means is you have a regular floor, wooden mm -hmm. floors, but everything is canvas yeah. around you. Yeah. Um, and it, there's beautiful, beautiful views and everything. And you have eight of those. And you said you have one family yes. tent as well. So yeah. people can come with their children and... Mm -hmm. I'm sure you have special things you can do with the children to kind of yeah, educate yeah, them yeah. and keep them interested. Yes, indeed. Yeah. So um, our, our camp um, has got about three key principles. Yeah, number one is we have to be very low key to the ground as, as the world is gravitating towards eco-friendly and, uh, and part of it is local. Yes. We couldn't be any local. Yeah. I'm born in a village. So, so Dominic, yes. so we, we still live in goats, with goats and cows and, and, 
uh, and with schemes and mm -hmm. so on. We, we are just as raw as you can be. Mm -hmm. So that, we qualify that quickly. Then we have to learn quickly that the eco-friendly business is the way it's going. Yes. So our camp is 100% solar uh, from your, your heating, for your water, mm -hmm. for your lights, for your charging. Everything is 100% solar. Yes. So, Including our staff quarters, everything is 100%. Everything so solar. Yes. Cooking, we are using gas. Yes. So we don't use the firewood for, for all that kind of activity. Right. Apart from campfire. Yes. Obviously, campfire, we have to have yes. a fire because it's a traditional uh, lifestyle. That's, that's principle number one. Number two, um, the wildlife m must share this with us. Mm -hmm. As we believe in our culture that we have to share this world and this planet with all the species that God created, the wildlife, the elephants, hippos, lions, and everything must go through this camp and live here and sleep here and graze here with us. And so we, said, we have to keep that and minimize the impact as much as possible. Right? I've done a math with all the tents combined, including the mares, we will be sitting under two acres of total of the 50. Uh, 50 acres that is this land is okay. so only two acres that is combined everything else we have to give it to, to the, the animals, animals. Yes. animals yes as you can hear the birds yeah yeah absolutely yeah happy. or hear the hippos in the background yesterday we saw a giraffe come through here yeah. so yeah it's yeah uh, it's uh, uh, last principle is uh is, is 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 our guiding you know our our experience with yes we we believe that you know to compete with the rest of the world, yes, we have to have good tents, but we have to have the best team in Cairo. Yes, we people need to learn, people need to understand what is there in terms of wildlife, how to pray. Position the car first is the wildlife. Look after those cubs, look after right. those lions, look after that cheetah. Do not interact with their life, don't interfere. Do not mm -hmm. interfere. That's our main uh, etiquette of mm -hmm. our guides and our guiding team here yeah. so that when people come here we focus entirely on guest experience and experience with wildlife yeah. with very minimum interference right. as possible right very important uh, the eight tents uh with a family tent obviously we would like to have families and the uh, multi-generationals is very common yes uh so grandpa uh, grandma, uh, grandparents and parents and daughters and sons and grandchildren they, they can take the whole camp exclusively. Right. So that's why we put it up to uh, 16 beds. Yeah. Um, with the families, um, with the family tent. If, if a family comes and says, Oh, my, my children are a little bit small, I will be scared to leave my kids up there. Yeah. So say, Right, you can have your own room with your, with your kids. That is yeah. just fabulous. Yeah. So that's how we, we operate. Right. How you are. Right. Well, it's a great, great model and it's a wonderful, wonderful location. And, you know, I think right now we should talk just a minute about, um, you know, with, with COVID going on, it's a, it, around the world it's been very difficult. It's been very difficult here as well. And I think that there are some people that might think that they're not welcome uh, right now, especially coming from the United States, you know, places where um, the virus has been particularly virulent recently. But but you do feel comfortable as long as people take the, the proper precautions. Mm -hmm. And um, so, you know, just say how you, you feel about your guests coming under the, under the circumstances right now. Well, um, first of all, um, the world has, uh, uh, is now taking responsibility and, you know, being responsible when you're traveling. Uh, when somebody's getting to the plane and come to us, we know those people are committed and they are responsible enough to be taking a test that is necessary. Once those people have come, they have a free COVID test certificate. Yes. We all have the same. Yes. We're, we welcome those people. We're very comfortable around them. We are very comfortable to have those people coming from the United States yes. or from England, let's yes. say, yes. where the, the virus have become, or, you know, went up. Mm -hmm. As much as it is going up, well, they, the death, we believe, is going to, to slow down. Yes. And those people who are responsible enough, we don't have a problem here. Right. And, and the more you come responsibly and the more we are trained to be responsible to take care of you, yes with all the policies that have been put in place by the Kenya, uh, the Kenya government, we are very comfortable yes. and we welcome 
everyone. Well, we, it's we don't been... Have, we don't have a problem at all. Yeah, but then, and that's good to know. I mean, we, everybody has been very welcoming, and there's always there's great protocols in place on the airplanes. You know, you have to be in your masks, and uh, the hand-washing, hand-sanitizing, distancing, of course, is to how people are comfortable. Um, you know, in the vehicles, the uh, guys are always wearing masks, and so it is, you know, there's, n I've not felt uh, for a minute mm -hmm. that I'm concerned uh, about being here. I actually feel safer here than I do at home right yeah. now, so that's been, uh, been great, because everybody takes it very seriously yeah. and is, um, is, is really um, respectful mm -hmm. about, about all that, so uh, yeah, so you all are doing a fabulous job. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me today. I appreciate yeah. it very much. You're welcome. So, okay, yeah. good.